They hung on one 81-77, but now the scene shifts. About half the size as far as number of people. It's certainly going to be as loud. He will jump center against Charles Spediaco, Alabama in red, Auburn in white. Controlled by Jeff Jasper in the backcourt for the Auburn Tigers. Their lineup, they're starting five. Jasper and KD Johnson, Alan Flanagan, Jabari Smith, Mr. Everything, and Walker Kessler down low. How many dunks do we have tonight? Smith's first shot was contested, and it's a miss, and here comes Keon Ellis. A little back screen to get Jabari Smith into the post, and there's Kessler with those long arms and the deflection. Two on one, Johnson. He lays it up and in, and a quick start for the Tigers. And Johnson did that through contact. That was a strong drive in transition. Auburn going to switch guard to guard and big to big. Now here's the key. How do they guard ball screens? Jawan Gary off the great game. Jamari Smith knocked that away. Two on the shot clock. Ellis open for a three. That's no good. The rebound, Flanagan. Aaron Flanagan coming off that injury. He's not 100%, but even 70% of this great athlete is pretty darn good. Alabama would like to shoot quickly. Auburn not afraid to use nearly all the shot clock to sit, get a good shot. And Kessler's the guy they love to set up. Valley Oops just there. Guards can beat their defenders. Jabari baseline too strong. He's over too early. Both his shots off that right block, fading away. Those are difficult shots, but he's such a good jump shooter. They're good shots for him. Mediaco, and there's a foul on Kessler. And a little frustration from the Auburn fans who've seen this before in the first meeting against Alabama. And Kessler just overhelped a bit there and wound up behind Bediaco and tried to block the shot from behind instead of just bothering. You see, just sort of overcommitted here. Trying to go up and guard that ball screen. Bediaco never went to it. He never went to set it. And Alabama sets a lot of what they call ghost screens. They look like they're going to go set a screen. They just run right through it. And that's going to be a factor in this game. Bediaco knocks down the first one. He hasn't really been much of a factor offensively for them. 59% free throw shooter. Nate Oates. On one side line, of course, Bruce Pearl has been in the news for his massive contract that he just signed. Stay with Alabama, quote unquote, for life. It's an eight year deal, and it's going to pay him over $50 million. Thank you, Maryland and Louisville. <laughs> That's right. Those openings and the number one ranking, and Jabari Smith all came at the right time. A very perfect storm for Bruce Pearl. That's a 2 1 early here. They had Kessler. It's good hands by Ellis, and they're going to get a foul underneath. Probably going to be on Ellis or Bediaco, and it's on the big fella Bediaco. The first pass by Flanagan was made too low. He needed to loft that up. You're not going to be able to throw a lob from your shoulder. But he had the presence of mind to grab that ball again and got fouled. There's all sorts of hope when Flanagan came back that he would be the same guy he was last year. And as Jay said, he's about 70% off of an Achilles tear. He didn't have that jump. Kind of like watching James Rojas on the other team. He doesn't have that explosiveness. He doesn't have the explosiveness that he had before, but he's still explosive. I mean, I think a lot of guys have prayed for his explosiveness even at 70% because he's a spectacular athlete. Offensive rebound off the missed free throw by Kessler. Johnson one-on-one with Quinterly, and he settles for a long three. Too strong and Betty Yako. So neither team hot from the start shooting. But Juwan Gary doing a good job early on against Jabari Smith. Betty Yako challenging Kessler. You can see they're trying to get him to pick up his second foul. Well, they really need to attack him in ball screens. He's not going to get a ton of fouls trying to block shots because he's good at keeping his body away from him. Auburn does not shoot as many threes as Alabama, but so far tonight. They're doing just that as Quinterly uses Bediaco's screen to throw off one that comes up way short. It's a tough shot trying to go over Kessler. He just stays back in drop coverage. Alabama 0 for 4 from the floor. Here's a takeaway. And Alabama waited until he dribbled it and then went to steal it. Ellis, that's a 3 and that's good.
Those are the threes, Gravy, that Bruce Pearl is most worried about. The quick three in transition. You have to find both Shackelford and Ellis right away. Gaston went right by Quinterly and a soft when he couldn't get it to go. John Quinterly has been a guy when he's done well recently. Alabama's won their games. When he hasn't, they've lost. And he will launch a long one and go back iron. I'm not sure that was the shot for Quinterly. Quinterly, he was pretty well guarded. But Quinterly was really good in that game against Baylor at 20 points. But he has struggled shooting the ball in SEC play just 8 for 47 from 3. And he was a 43% three-point field goal shooter. Last year, he shooting about 25% this year. Now you watch Walker Kessler here. Fediaco hesitated, allowed Kessler to catch up, and he blocks a ton of shots. He's blocked 86 shots coming into this one. And there's the transition three. You have to find both Ellis and Shackelford at that three-point line. It's, it's easier said than done. But transition is where Alabama is most effective. But Kessler changes so many shots just with his presence there. Right. So J.D. Davison now in and leaning on Jabari Smith is Darius Miles. You see the brace on his left knee. Good defender and a good shooter. Smith, ball fake. He got hit on the arm and threw it up, but he will go to the free throw line. That's going to be called against Jaden Shackelford. Free throws coming from arguably the number one draft pick in the nation this season, Jabari Smith, when we come back. I asked Auburn guard KD Johnson today what making history means to this team, and he noted the 2019 Final Four team here on the Plains. He said everybody we talked to discusses that team and its impact on this fan base and the culture here at Auburn University. He said, we want to make our own history. He said, Jabari and I came here along with Kessler to make sure that we don't supplant them, but what we join them in the lore here on the Plains. Carl. Thank you, Adele. We appreciate it. <laughs> 20 and 1. Their only loss was to UConn at Atlantis. And a loose ball. Rojas dives to the floor. And it's tied up. It's going to stick with Alabama. Okay, if they go 7 and 3 the rest of the way, it'll give them 27 wins, most in school history. It's really remarkable what Bruce Pearl has done here at Auburn. And being number one, to Marty Smith's point, it, it says in their locker room, make history. It's written up on the wall. And they are making history. The 2019 Final Four and then the first number one ranking. And Bruce Pearl wanted that number one ranking. If they're giving it out, you might as well take it. And here's what's really difficult. This team makes it so hard to get the ball in bounds. Alabama can't think about scoring on out of bounds under. They've got to think about getting it in because they put a big on the ball and they really see it in because you inbound with a guard. Then they switch everything. And all the action's going to come to them, so they just switch it. And they communicate really well. Five guys playing incredibly hard for five seconds. And oftentimes, opponents, they're thinking about, hey, how do we score? This team's just thinking about how do we get it in. And then they do get it into Jaden Shackelford in the corner. He launched a shot. I think it's a two, and he picked up the foul, so he will go to the free throw line. Don Daly, one of our officials, Chuck Jones, Stephen Anderson, make up the crew. And I think Don Daly's just going to make sure it's a two or a three. Yeah, they've ruled it a two, so they're just checking to see. But Shackelford doing a great job when Green overcommitted. He just went right through his arms. He just ripped through low and, and went. Talk about Jaden Shackelford. He's a left-handed shooter. You'll see that at the free throw line. He does everything else with his right hand. And I know Jay at the top of the show, he is a terrific finisher at the rim. As good as a shooter as he is and as frequent a shooter as he is, he is tremendous in the paint and around the rim. He's got a great shot fake, and he's got shot credibility because he can make so many threes. But he gets to the free throw line a ton. And over his last four games, he's averaging eight free throw attempts a game and averaging about 21 and a half points over that period. Here are the Shackleford numbers. And by the way, how about this three-game gauntlet? Alabama is trying to go through it. They knocked off number four Baylor. Here they are against number one Auburn and Saturday on ESPN. Kentucky's moved all the way up to five. You add them up, it just ranks ten. Four, one, and five, and they 
Pete Baylor, and they were awfully impressive doing it. Miles. Don Bailey called a foul on him. Jabari will shoot a couple. Well, that was out of their little 2-3 set. And it was just an isolation on that left elbow for Jabari Smith. That's where he's so difficult. They run that misdirection off that flex act. And you think the, the cutter is going to come off a low screen. He bumps back, and all of a sudden you got an isolation one-on-one -on -one against a great isolation player. He missed the free throw Thursday night after the NFL Pro Bowl's skills showdown. The top teams in the Pac-12 square off. Bruins take on Arizona. Again, UCLA just beat him pretty badly. He was by 16 at Poly last Tuesday. A huge game for both. And our coverage starts at Eastern 5 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. Ben Matherin for Arizona Ooh. is in the player of the year conversation. A little bit further down the list. I think Oscar Shibway of Kentucky is leading the pack right now. Jabari Smith on that list. For guys that can do it. Jalen Williams into the game. So far it's been a free throw shooting contest. Neither team has been good from the field. In fact, each team's one of six. And both have made four free throws. Wendell Green Jr. guarding shackle for he can get up underneath him. And a switch. Rojas has a mismatch and he goes to the hole with it. Now a kick. And Shackle for it, a high wow. arcing three, knocks it down. Really good look from Rojas. Well, that was a great pass. But Hardwell came over to help. You had to rotate. And Shackleford was wide open. Katie <laughs> Johnson. They found Devin Cambridge who brought down the house. And that was a set play because it looked for the life of us that KD Johnson was somehow going to get that up on the rim. Shackleford, that one is off. Ellis keeps it alive. Long rebounds, and this is a good offensive rebounding team because of those long rebounds. There's that finishing ability yep. that you were talking about, Ravi. Shackleford is an excellent driver, but that shot sets it all up. KD Davidson, one of those. Terrific five-star recruits for Alabama as a guard. He's been playing a lot better lately and tremendous energy in that game against Baylor. He has got tremendous springs in his oh. legs. There's no guard that jumps higher than he does. Green, good bounce pass. Hardwell off the window. He was huge in that first meeting when Kessler was in foul trouble. That was a beautiful pass and a great catch by Cardwell. He was so good against Alabama when mm. Kessler was in foul trouble. Boy, Davison, a great ball fake, and his tips up and in. Noah Gurley with the basket. Katie Johnson. Block. And Shackleford. Boy, watch this pass by Green. Just threads the needle in between two defenders. And then Cardwell's able to catch it without charging in. You know, basically played off two feet. And didn't get going too fast, but against Alabama in the last game, he had six points, six rebounds, four blocks coming in for Kessler when Kessler was in that foul difficulty. Well, speaking of foul difficulty, Kessler had it in game one. Shackleford now with 1344 has picked up his second. And that's a huge development for Alabama's Quinterly will come in and Shackleford will go to the bench. Bruce Pearl can throw so many fresh bodies at you. you know, he has an excellent core of guards. They're all different, but they all have strengths that they can go to. How about Jalen Williams? And we've seen the transfer portal and the effect it has. Jalen Williams started every game last year. You get Jabari Smith shows up, he didn't start any game. Yeah, but still comes in yeah. and gives good minutes. I mean, the lefty. He's really strong. He's got a good skill level, and he's versatile. But you know, a lot of guys will pull the ripcord and say, "I got to go find a place I can play and start." He hung it out. Quinterly will kick Davison. That's too strong. Pretty good box out there by Wendell Green Jr. Smallest guy on the floor. Oh, great pass. Good luck, Williams. He got hacked. Keon Ellis prevented a dunk, but two free throws. For Williams. But Green really battled down low. He used his leverage. I mean, he can't be more than 5'10". And he comes down floor. And he's got great vision. Just a little look away pass. Now you can see a little bit of what he saw. 
but a great job by Williams of running the floor and making himself available. 6 8, 2 30, knocks down the first free throw. Auburn's got seven free throws in the game, seven of nine to start. Williams is a high school wide receiver, it's like he's open in the back of the end zone. <laughs> And Green's made a couple of good passes here early, and we are not at 14 with 13, 15 to go in the first half. Pretty good defensive guard tandem. Jasper, one of the best on-ball on defenders in the Southeastern Conference. He's on Quinterly right now. Turning his head, looking for a screen. Nickname of Honey Badger, and of course, and Matthew with LSU in the football field, known as the Honey Badger, too strong. Gurley's gotten a couple of offensive rebounds. That's the block by Kessler, and he averages four a game. Oh, Cambridge was open. Green saw him again, but he just threw it too high. We have an advantage here. Ellis throws it up. That's no good. Kessler again affected it, and Auburn pushes three on two. Kessler's like a middle blocker in volleyball. Wendell Green is having a major impact in the early minutes here with his passing and driving. And they get Jasper on a foul. Wendell pleading his case for a three-point play here. It's a little in-out move and got fouled, just didn't get called. And Quinley raked him with that left arm of his. It's amazing how much contact is let go in these games, but give Wendell Green Jr. credit for finishing that play when he got fouled and it was uncalled. Rojas is out. Betty Ocho is back in. Quinterly. Messi does a good job right staying on his feet. Ellis around Betty Ocho. He's off. But nobody got it for Auburn, so Alabama picks it up. And Ellis keeps firing. That's short. And that's on their clear. Well, because Alabama keeps the floor so spread, it's hard to get a block out. They get a run up, and it's just a, a race to the ball. And this is an athletic team. But if you can't get a body on them, then these rebounds just become loose balls. Good hands by Ellis. You can almost see that was going to be an alley-oop attempt to Walker Kessler. But it was deflected away by Keon Ellis. A little bit of a football game start to this one. 16-14 Auburn. The SPN third and every Gonzaga. Yeah. They yeah. Are. Kentucky's there are probably about eight teams that I think are, are the primary contenders for a national title. And healthy Kentucky is one of those. You know, they've got a, a machine yeah. in yes. Oscar Shibla, who is a He's not only grabbing those 15 rebounds a game, he keeps the ball alive where his teammates grab more. And then if Keon Brooks steps in as 27 points yeah. at Kansas, and they have speed and, and they're an older team, which is unusual for John Calipari. It's the oldest team Kentucky's ever had. Are these two teams in amongst your eight? Uh, Auburn is. Alabama. Alabama could be. But they, you know, they just, they've not shot the ball well all year. Yep. Only shooting 27% in SEC play. There's a three. Good screen. And Wendell knocks it down. He's been terrific. Guys, I was just in Auburn's huddle, and Bruce Pearl implored his players attack the rim. Take the ball downhill. Alabama is fouling us a lot. Take advantage of them in transition and push, push, push. Get stops and run 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 now Noah Gurley just ended a 9-0 run well to Marty's point if you can get off this ball screen and attack get a piece of the paint all of a sudden you're bringing help like that help commits Kessler wide open Wendell Green another assist and a five-point lead is their biggest of the night Alabama trying to do the same thing to engage Kessler. And those are those are the buckets you have to finish. You can't get closer to the basket than that. Difference down one end. Kessler grabbed it and shot it. And that's going to be a foul. That's going to be Green hit by Davison. Wendell Green saying he was going up to shoot it. 
Now watch Walker Kessler here. He's going to set the ball screen, and Green is going to get downhill, as Marty Smith was just talking about, get a piece of the paint, drive right down the middle. Fediaco's got to back up. They come over to help, and all of a sudden, Walker Kessler just rolls right to the basket. You can't pick him up on the strong side because there's a shooter at the three-point line. Just really good offense and spread floor execution by Auburn out of the timeout. Green tried to sell the officials that he was shooting it. Still a one-on-one. -on -one. He wasn't. Seven fouls for Alabama. Only three for Auburn. Jabari Smith back into the game for the Tigers. Pretty sure good. This guy has been the biggest impact player in the game so far, as you see. One with Alabama. And the other with Auburn. I think they're related. Well, he comes off the bench with such energy. So dynamic and good with the ball. His speed is game-changing. And you know he can shoot it from the logo and will. He's fearless. Free throw good. Jaden Shackelford is out with two fouls. He's got eight points. And by the way, since he left the game, they've been outscored by ten. Take by Quinterly. Bediaco was there as Kessler went to block it. And watch out. Katie Johnson. He'll go hard. He does. No good. And no foul called. Well, he created the contact. That's why he didn't call a foul. He went into the defender. Gurley. High arcing three. Too strong. Jason Holt is coming to the game for Alabama. As Nate Oates tries to press some buttons with Shackleford sitting there with two. Green. Straight on. He was looking for a foul. I didn't see any contact. Gurley will try again. That's better. It rattles around and in. Quinterly set him up. Well, that was just really good. Open floor basketball by Javon Quinterly. And he took it right into the paint. And there was a little bit of help off of Noah Gurley and a wide open shot. Here's that isolation. Smith. To go to the free throw line where he's made a living tonight. There's KD Johnson. Now watch. He, he's going to go right into the contact to try to draw the foul. But, you know, I don't think the defender was in any sort of legal guarding position. But a wide open shot because Javon Quinterly got right into the paint. Everybody collapsed around the ball. And that, that left Gurley wide open. In the college basketball system today, if your guard is running down the floor, you you go to the corners, right? You, yes. You go and fan out. It used to be that you ran to the rim <laughs> exactly. and might even cross underneath. You don't see that anymore. Everybody runs right to the corners to flatten the defense and to space the floor. And that gives you room in the middle if you get help. If anybody tries to stop the drive off a shooter, you got a wide open shot. Jamari Smith missed that. He's got all his points from the free throw line. Now three of five, and they put Shackleford back in. He'll play with two fouls at the 8.45 mark. Being guarded by KD Johnson. Ellis now has Kessler on him. They switch. Not sure they wanted that switch, but Keon's got to take this on. Ball fakes. That's an easy block for Kessler, and it leads to KD to Flanagan. Bediaco, wow. that is... Yeah, that, that hit the back. They did a goal ten. Nate Oates wasn't sure that it hit the back door, or she's arguing against it. But how about Kessler staying on the floor? Doesn't go for any of the fakes on the pivot, and that block shot starts to break. But the athleticism on the floor is just next level. Quinterly step back to the left and short with Javon Quinterly, who was so good in that last game, is 0 for 5 tonight. I give credit to Zepp Jasper on yeah. that for his pressure on the ball. And Quinterly gave a little step back. That's not a, when you're going full speed with that kind of pressure on it's not an easy shot. Brannigan had Kessler rolling. He threw it up high, and it goes to the bottom. Well, you go with Kessler, it opens it up for Flanagan. You stay with Flanagan, and... Go with him, and then Kessler gets a lob. Frenetic defense by the Tigers tonight. Nothing's coming easy for the Tide. 
Shackleford just fired it up. Betty Ocko's there, but a foul beforehand. Well, this is why you want Walker Kessler on the floor. He had one of Quinter League. Well, especially Seth Jasper. He's put such good pressure on the ball. And Katie Johnson is not only strong, he's aggressive trying to get steals. But the difference has been Walker Kessler. Yeah. He stays on the floor. He's already blocked four shots. He's changed more than that. And his presence around the rim, even if you're able to get by some of the Auburn guards, they're funneling you into Kessler. What's the difference between Walker Kessler this year and years before? Well, he didn't get to play as much last year at North Carolina because he's playing behind two really good big guys. You know, Dayron Sharp was the best offensive rebound in the country last year for North Carolina, and Armando Baycott was excellent and is having a, another great year with a beautiful screen roll. And a great job by Jasper to set a pick on the roll defender. Well, that's just really good execution out of the timeout and after the free throws. Even won that first meeting really without Kessler playing much. He's playing a huge role tonight. Four points, four blocks. He's got six rebounds already as well. He's already got a triple double this year in which he had 11 blocks in a game. Shackleford looking for help, and it's Gary who he finds. And that's a shot clock violation. They didn't get it off. Now watch Walker Kessler here. He comes up and sets a little middle ball screen and then Jasper sets a screen on the roll defender. So watch Jasper number 12. He sets a screen on Betty Ako and that opens up a lob for Kessler. So clearly has got to jump in front of him. No guard wants to do that. That's just really good execution. And you run those things out of the middle of the floor. It is tough to stop screen and roll unless you foul him. Katie Johnson, that's off. How hard is it to design new plays? Well, it doesn't have to be new. It just has to be well executed. There's nothing new about a middle third screen and roll. And nothing new about that back screen. You're going to foul on Jabari. But Bruce Pearl does make adjustments in the way he runs offense based on personnel. Right. I mean, their scouting reports seem like they're different every game. You know, they're not guarding ball screens every game and uh, the same way. And, you know, I sat in their film session yesterday, and after my head was spinning. And afterwards, I said to Bruce, how much do you throw at these guys relative to what you threw at a team, you know, 10, 15 years ago? And he said, oh, it's, it's by a multiple of 10. Right. Uh, the, it, things are so much more complicated in what you run and what, and what you, you know, the coverage is how you defend. And uh, this is as well prepared a team as you're going to see all year. Uh, their, their scouting report was impeccable, as I know Nate Oates's was. Casper gets a rest. Shackleford's got Caldwell on him, a blow by, and he just missed the layup. He was expecting a shot block attempt. Baby Johnson knows one speed and one speed only. And that was just barreling down the lane and he had the foul. He is like a truck. He is. I'll be honest, it looked like the truck was falling down before anybody touched him, but they got the foul on Quinterly. Yeah, you know, nothing in the rule book says the ball handler has to be under control, but you know, he got he got hit there. It's like, it's like driving a Volkswagen with a head on it. <laughs> <laughs> We've got defensive pencil and Volkswagen with a head. You're on a you got 547 left in the first half. You're, you're gonna roll tonight. <laughs> he brings a, a different energy to the floor, doesn't he? He sure he, does. He's so strong, and he's a, a terrific athlete. But Bruce Pearl, in a, a loving way, says he's a psychopath out there, <laughs> but he's my psychopath. Privately, KD may say similar about his coach. <laughs> Very privately. <laughs> Winterweight to the hole. He leaves that up in a high one off the backboard. Oh, what a great crossover. He is so quick. He's just got jets. That was a long drive. He had plenty of time to recover, but he got to the rim so quickly. It's not like he's blowing by guys that aren't right. athletic. His first field goal, he's one of six. Smith 
Sent Gary to the floor and then laid it up and in for his first field goal tonight. He's got five. Well, that's what Alabama wants to make him do. They'd rather have him drive. Mm. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, what, what, what do you have? 0.6 seconds to get that thing off? They'd be in a whole bunch of trouble without his 13. He's got half of Alabama's points. It stays a seven-point game. Contact out top. That leads to a shot. Wendell Green, like so many of the other recent guards that have had success in Pearl, not afraid to launch. Told you he was going to shoot it from the logo. He did. <laughs> he did. And here's Jabari Smith going basically one-on-one -on -one against Juwan Gary. And Gary's a good defender. Boy, isn't it amazing the... Uh, Technology and face masks now. Yes. I mean now John Gary looks like a superhero with that thing on He used to look like a a dork back in the old days <laughs> Shackleford misses a three Marty has more on the Headgear that Juwan Gary is wearing and how it was created green spin move and a foul Wendell Green followed by Ellison. He will go to the free throw line to complete a three-point play Ravi, he stayed so low on that spin move. Watch how low he is and just spins right past and is still able with the right hand to get that shot up and off the glass. That was spectacular by Wendell Green Jr. So dynamic on the floor. His next point will be his 10th. kidding guys when you say that this face mask is new and improved look at this thing it really does look like batman's face mask it has juan gary's name on it gary under the left eye juan under the right eye and gary suffered a, a severe uh, facial contusion against lsu team trainer clark holder went to look for a right way whoa look at that look at that this place is unglued guys this place is absolutely unglued that was a Devin Cambridge three after a Quinterly miss. So now Gurley will drive. And an offensive foul. Finish that story, Marty. Really is a very interesting technology. Alabama team trainer Clark Holder went to work trying to find a lightweight max protection option. Join the party. Everyone talks about Bruce Pearl. Great coach, great recruiter, great evaluator. You think about J.D. Johnson, K.D. Johnson. You think about uh, their backcourt. But, hey, Jay, some people say working with you is like working with a psychopath. <laughs> yeah, that's true. There's, there's nothing wrong with being a psychopath. It's only if you get caught. It has such a negative connotation, right? There's an oh! arrow, and Dylan Cardwell steps into it. Shackleford now with Smith on him. How do you stay in front of these guys? This is just quick on quick. Now he oops in your DNA, and now Smith buries a three, and it's all Tigers tonight. They are rolling the tide. Well, to say that Auburn has been the more aggressive team is an understatement. Turning the corner and just lobbing it up to Dylan Cardwell. That's just beautiful. And Wendell Green Jr. is just fearless. I mean, that's his fourth assist. You're looking at a, at a team in Auburn that's got 21 points off the bench now. And that three by Jabari Smith, another one in transition. And you can see why Jabari Smith is favored to be the number one pick in the upcoming NBA draft. He's just got a beautiful stroke. Great range. Jay, you're talking about Jabari Smith potentially going number one overall in the NBA draft. So he could have gone anywhere to college this year. I asked him why Auburn. He said because there's a lot of coaches who played here and played at the next level who've kind of been in similar shoes. And then there's Bruce Pearl. He cares so much about his players and the free play style. He told me nothing would be given. And he treated me no different than anybody else. If you want to win, he told him, come on to Auburn. We're winning now. 
Yeah, Marty, he also told him you're not going to score 25 a game if you come to Auburn. If you want to do that, you can go somewhere else. But you'll have games where you score 25 or 30. But you've got good players around him. He blends in well. I mean, that last shot he made was next level because he got fouled. It just didn't get called. And he elevates, and then he shoots from so high, it's an impossible shot to block. And as Chris Pearl always says about good players, and in this case, Jabari Smith, why are you so good? Well, we have Jabari Smith, and they don't. Mike Schmidt's going to join us under the 16th of the second half. We'll talk about whether he will go one or two or three. Number Green missed the three. There's going to be a foul down on this end. Alabama's getting beaten up a little bit in this game. Rojas got smacked as he ran into Devin Cambridge. He's banged up. Still feeling it. Rubbing his temples right now. Well, Alabama is small right now. Yeah. And James Rojas comes in. He, he's been injured. But he gives them a little bit more toughness uh, in the lane and around the rim. But they can spread you out. The problem is, you know, can they defend? And Bruce Pearl's throwing a lot of big bodies at Alabama and they're making it's like they're making line changes yeah. but there's no drop off when Auburn goes to the bench they may have a best lineup but no matter who's in the game they can operate if they go 10 deep he is triple teamed for a second and then he threw it away J.D. Davison is back in the game Miles challenges Schmidt he blocks the shot and then he gets fouled well, that's another reason why Jabari Smith is so highly regarded. Makes a turnover, comes down the other end, and makes a big-time block. He can block shots. He defends. Went right over the top of Miles to knock that thing away. Timed it beautifully. I asked Smith today, fellas, to shoot around, when are you at your best? He said, I'm at my best when I defend. And I'm not worried about the offensive end. Offense comes more natural to me. And when I'm defending, I'm playing with energy, efforts, effort, and passion. And that's the best version of me as a player. And, Marty, he'd have more blocked shots if it weren't for Kessler being in the game. It's kind of like looking at Kentucky players saying, why don't you grab more rebounds? So have you seen that Sheboy guy? He's getting them all. And it's hard to block shots when Kessler does it first. But Jabari Smith can, can change and block shots with almost anybody. Free throw gives him 11. His three-pointer has given him a three-pointer in 17 straight games. And what a first half for Auburn as we hit the two-minute mark. Up 19, Darius Miles. His three finds the bottom, and they need a lot more of those. Miles is known more as a, a slasher and a driver. And he's really good in the open floor, but you leave him that wide open, he's going to knock shots down. Kessler rolls and crushes. Well, there's that middle of the floor action where you're hugged up on shooters, and he has all that space to operate. And another beautiful little pocket pass by Wendell Green Jr. Rojas, he'll hit a three from. Way beyond the arc, back-to-back -back three pointers, but hard to pick up points when all Auburn's doing is throwing alley oops and their big guys dunking everything. Well, and, and Auburn doesn't want to overreact to a couple shots going down. You know, they want to protect the two-point area because Alabama shoots 58 percent from two. We're going to get this call overruled. Chuck Jones, Steven Anderson, I think both saw that ball deflected out of bounds to Don Daly. We'll hand it to Auburn on the inbound. Smith and Cambridge are coming out. Now Williams they, and Flanagan are in, to your point. If they go for a flat here, watch Kessler. They're going to try to get a lob here. They may not get it, but Flanagan's going to just take Davison down. And there it is. But Rojas seemed to get away with a foul as Kessler ended up on the ground. He grabbed his arm. And no call. Now Shackelford into traffic. Kessler affects it. This is a big time run out. It went off the back heel of Davidson. Otherwise, another dunk. The DNA says alley oop now. Dunk it. Here's Kessler, in this middle of the floor. He doesn't even set the ball screen. He just slips it. And there's nobody there to pick it up. You know, Rojas is looking for the drive, but he didn't even have to set the screen. They kept him away from it. As soon as you beat your man, 
you're throwing it up to the rim. And he can go get it. And he can go get it. Stoking Cambridge. Loose ball on the floor. Miles. And they got a three on one. And what will Shackleford do? Knock down a three. Well, to your earlier point, that used to be a run for a layup. But now, Alabama's not going to get a better three point opportunity than that. You get it into your best shooter's hands early in the shot clock. Just go ahead and pull the trigger. Jaden Shackleford, Jay, has 16 points in the first half, and they're back within 12. That was a big time answer by Alabama. Yeah, Al Auburn got a little loose with it the last few possessions. They've turned it over, and Alabama took advantage of it. Wendell Green, good defense. They got five. Johnson banged by Rojas, out of bounds, and a stay with Auburn. Yeah, that, that was a foul that should have been whistled, but what a, what a crossover by J.D. Johnson. Herb Jones, who is the SEC Defensive Player of the Year and one of the best defenders in the country, if not the best. And and your defense is going to be the same. It's yeah. changed. Yeah. All right, so two seconds to inbound the ball and try to get a shot off. They get it down low, and they're going to get a foul just on Holt. Hit Flanagan. Yeah, that was just a counter to the play. Yep. They went four flat, and the play they ran before was to get a lob to Kessler. And that time, instead of setting the screen, Flanagan just curled Kessler and went to the other side of the rim, was wide open. And when you're guarding that out of bounds underneath, you have to protect the middle. You want to get it to the short side of the floor. Flanagan's got six now, and they have taken 19 free throws and hit 15 of them. They've been getting into the lane and forcing Alabama to foul. It's really a turnaround of the last game. Alabama shot 29 free throws in that last game, and Auburn's headed to that and more. Nate Oates with a second. 1.7 brings his shooters in. He's got Shackelford, Quinterly, Davison, and Ellis all on the floor. Jason Holt's going to try to inbound this thing. Quinterly and he will fire and hit the backboard. You don't get any points for that. Jabari Smith has 11. Wendell Green has 10. Shackleford 16, but it's 51 37. Auburn. Marty. 21 points off the bench for yeah. Auburn. They shot 57% in the first half to Alabama's 32%. But Ravi, it, it doesn't feel like 14 against Alabama is that big of a lead. What's Marty, yeah. Marty, what does Nate Oates think? I just chatted with him on the way out of the tunnel, guys, and he was frustrated. He said, we gave him 16 at the line, 18 in transition. To get back in it, we have to get back. We have to guard them. They're not taking great shots. So if we guard them for 10 to 15 seconds, they, they're apt to take a bad shot. On the offensive end, we're missing shots, and we're missing bad shots. We've got to move the ball better. And they actually made a lot of threes, which kept them in this game. And now Juwan Gary is going to go to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Alabama shot 7 of 16 from 3, which is 43%, and they haven't done that all season. Well, Alabama didn't get any easy baskets in the first half. Mm -hmm. you know, they weren't creating anything off their defense, but when you got Walker Kessler and Jabari Smith in there, when you do get it near the rim, you know, they were blocking or changing just about every shot that was inside the paint. Kessler has just one foul. If you're Auburn, what, uh, Alabama, what is the message? What are you doing? What are you trying to do to get back in the game? Well, to Marty's point, you're not gonna you're not gonna make a comeback without getting stops. So it really starts on the defensive end for Alabama. And a lot of times they were running back and scrambling back in transition, whether it was after a long rebound, a block shot. You know, Auburn had a couple steals in the first half, but not that many. But really, the paint was dominated by Auburn. They had 26 points in the paint in that first half to only eight yep. for Alabama. A lot of those came off of those fast break alley -oop dunks, 18 off fast breaks. Meets the free throw, and Keon Ellis kept it alive, and Quinterly comes up with it. For a chance to cut further into that lead, Flanagan bodied Quinterly, and they're going to get Alan Flanagan with a foul. So a couple of early fouls to start the second half for Auburn. Well, Javon Quinterly is going to have to be really aggressive offensively. And you still have to find opportunities every chance you get for Shackleford. That's so hard just to get the ball in. 
Ediaco has an idea and he finger rolls it up and uses the back of the rim and it rolls in for him. That was about as aggressive as Ediaco has taken the ball to the basket all year. Here's that flex action and Flanagan was wide open. But Ediaco put pretty good pressure on Walker Kessler so he couldn't see the cutter Flanagan underneath. Johnson with 10 on the shot clock. He throws it up. No good. And that time, Betty Otto blocked Kessler out. And Auburn gets whistled again. KD Johnson with a reach. And Bruce Pearl's letting everybody here know that's three fouls on us in a minute and two seconds. They don't have any. But they were all fouls. They were. I mean, the, the, the issue isn't how many foul calls have there been. Were, were they fouls yeah. or not? And they were all fouls. Second foul on Johnson. Quinterly has a lane. Oh, high over Kessler. What a shot. Javon Quinterly, who finished the first half, one of seven. And right now, Nate Oates, at least early, is not bringing any ball screens, ghost screens. They just say, hey, you think you can stay in front of Quinterly? Go ahead. And, and Jasper is a heck of a defender, but he couldn't do it. Flanagan working on Ellis. And they're going to get him beforehand. Now watch Quinterly going against a, an outstanding on-ball defender in Zepp Jasper. He just blows right by him going to his left. And they want to force Quinterly to his left. He's better going right. But it's not like he can't go left. He just proved that. Quinterly is such a unique player when he's good. Smith's got it down low in the paint on Gary. Betiaco was there too late. Jabari Smith laid it up and in. Well, Kessler was the passer up top. That's a design play on out-of-bounds under. Katie Johnson hurls the hurdles the first row of chairs and gets the round of applause once he returns. And Bruce Pearl doing a good job of isolating his best player underneath on that out of bounds under. Henry again uses the Rim as a defender against Kessler who can't block it and Javon Quinterly now picks up a couple of buckets here to start the second half And that's why he took it to the other side of the rim to shield that shot so Kessler couldn't get to it He knew he could blow by him. The question was could he get a shot over him and by using the rim he could It's an unblockable shot. It's not an unstoppable, but it's an unblockable shot and Smith missed Kessler had to switch out on that inbounds play and that's just a really good play by Javon Quinterly and a great finish against an outstanding shot blocker. That last shot by Jabari Smith, he can make that, but that's not the shot you want. Quinterly and Jasper, and he, he tripped him. He got him with his foot. Jasper flew right past him off that ball screen. So Quinterly lost legal guarding position. Any contact even doesn't knock him down. You got to call that. Third foul on Javon Quinterly. So they get some guys who've got three. Both Quinterly and Shackelford are two most effective offensive players. Back screen by Smith and he ducks in. Still have 10 on the shot clock. If Jasper will start against Quinterly. Oh, is he quick? That's a block that time by Betty Ako getting into the act defensively. Well, Quinterly got a piece of it. That just slowed the shot down, allowed Betty Ako to take it out of the air. Good fake. That was deflected by Kessler. It'll stay Alabama. Well, even when you get past your initial defender, you've got to get past Kessler. And it's not even easy to pass out. You know, you take that shot, he blocks it, you pass it out, he deflects it. What a luxury to have a, a shot blocker behind your defense like Walker Kessler. Looks like a big trip for Alabama, even though we're just underway in the second half. And Quinterly knocks down a three. And boy, has he been on fire. And now the six-point ball game. Alabama can make challenge shots. And that was a challenge shot from a guy who's coming off a 20-point game against Baylor, Javon Quinterly. Seven straight points. They're going to get foul on Juwan Gary trying to deny access to Jabari Smith trying to get in the low post. He's trying to make him run through his chest, but 
you can do that initially, you keep doing it, it's going to be a foul. What Alabama has done, and you can hear behind us how quiet it is, taking the crowd oh, out of it. How good is that? Betty Aco is there, his second block here in the half, and it goes out on Flanagan. Boy, a, a basket saving block by Betty Aco, but just a little up screen, and Flanagan came right off it, was wide open. This has been a little different Betty Aco than we saw in the first half. Really aggressive. That's a big time block. Took it right out of his hands. And it wasn't like Flanagan was going to lay that thing in. He was going to punch it. Shackleford's losing the ball. He gets it back. And now Quinterly finds Ellis who throw it for another three attempt, but no good from Darius Miles. But Quinterly should have taken that shot. He was open. How will Auburn respond to this first initial punch from Alabama? Johnson, Kessler, and they're going to get a push from behind on Miles. The official must have thought there was a little flop by Quinterly there because he was the primary defender. He had legal guarding position. It seemed like he kept it. Smith, that is a tough fadeaway, and he can't get it to go. Slow start for the Tigers in the second half, and a chance to get within six. Quinterly, another high archer boy, Javon Quinterly. What a second half. Well, he is feeling it, and very aggressive. Boy, we said that 14 didn't feel like that much. You know, those couple of buckets that Alabama made to close that first half were huge. Did that go off Kessler's hands? No, it'll stay with Auburn. 53-49, Alabama, whatever Nate Oates had to say. Pat turns it on here in the second half. Can't get much more efficient than 4-4 from the field early on in the second half, the first four minutes. Alabama was 5-6 for six from the field, over 80%, while Auburn just 1-7. of seven. And every shot that Auburn has taken since halftime has been challenged. That last open shot they got was in halftime warm-ups. Darius Miles trying to be a pain against Jabari Smith, and it worked that time. Quinterly push. Miles, he walked. Boy, he didn't know, should I shoot a three or take it to the hole? You can see Quinterly saying you should have shot it. Yeah, the answer was shoot it. He clearly showed great patience. But good job here by Darius Miles to, to challenge that shot without fouling. Smith tried to draw the contact, but because Miles was moving back and not into him, he wasn't able to draw the foul. Well, Wendell Green's back in. We talked about how effective he was in the first half, and here he is again penetrating. That's Pediaco's third block of the half. You want to make the 5'10 guy finish at the rim. Good shot, fake. Shackleford looks in the corner. He finds Miles who launches, then hits the side of the backboard. And they've had a couple of empty trips. They could have the lead right now. And Pediaco with the body sends Green to the floor. Jay was just discussing how well Alabama's defending without fouling, and Nate Oates is imploring his team to do that in the huddle. Just now during that timeout, he said, fellas, just look at the scoreboard. Defense is where it's at. Let's defend, let's make sure we don't foul, and let's make sure they're taking contested shots every single time down the floor. I can look at the replay and, and decided it was nothing. In, in fact, that was the word when one of the officials came over. And, Used one word and said, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Succinct. But if nothing else, maybe it diffused a little bit of that energy between the two sides. And Wendell Green knocks down the free throw, which gives Auburn, it feels like its first point in a long, long time. And one of the things you can see, Ravi, from when Wendell Green Jr. gets into the game, Jasper, he's such a good compliment to Zepp Jasper, who does a great job of putting, running the team and putting pressure on the ball. But he comes in, his speed and how dynamic of a scorer he is really changes the, the tempo and the temperature of the game. And you just don't lose a ton with Green on the defensive end. Shackelford knocks down a three. Jaden Shackelford to 19. Just a little ghost screen, comes up, looks like he's going to set a ball screen and just pops right out of it. 
And that's really hard action to guard. Off the window every time they get by the guard, it looks like it's an alley-oop. That was a shot that went in. Quinterly now kicks to the corner. And they keep moving it around. Shackelford will launch a three. That's good. Jaden Shackelford's got 22, and he has five three-pointers in seven shots. You know, Auburn Ravi did a pretty darn good job of guarding there. I mean, they just had to make so many rotations, and Alabama just did a great job of moving the ball. And once it gets to Shackelford, he knows what to do with it. You know, pretty good coverage. That's a little, little ghost screen. He just pops right out of it. But the excellent ball movement, and that's what, when you're closing out to Shackelford, you know, he's got that shot credibility. He can just give you a little, little subtle shot fake. He goes right by you. And Batman is getting an adjustment. Shackelford's been Superman. So is Quinterly in this half. Rocco Kessler's been fairly quiet and tough inbound. Hot along that. Line by Wendell Green, started by Quinterly. Kessler's got four threes this year. He drives. Betty Ako picks up his fourth block, but the hustle gives it to Jalen Williams. That got the crowd back in it. Quinterly's three. Too strong. Betty Ako's been so active. Shackleford will fire away. No good, and Ellis try to keep it alive. Those long rebounds. Alabama is a really good offensive rebounding team, not because they grab them by the rim. They get the long ones. Green, yes, he hits the net. A step back three, and just like that, it's back to seven. A different team when Wendell Green is in the game. Quinterly gets in the paint, knocks it down. It's the Quinterly and Shackleford show. So good in space. You know, if you can crowd him with multiple defenders, I mean, you've got to show Quinterly bodies and not Wood, because if he sees Wood, he's going to take up that space. Whoa, Wendell Green way outside. Kessler the board. Throws it up and in. Somehow a two-handed shot rolled over the front iron, and he will shoot for a three-point play. <laughs> I, I think he just blew that down at the rim. And Wendell Green claimed that was just a pass. That was a very thoughtful pass, shooting behind the ball screen at the logo. Now, we said he'd shoot it from the logo. He's done it twice. has become a good shooter, and he knocks that down for the free throw. Boy, it gets down to two, now it's back to eight. A two-three zone look, it looks like, for Auburn. You know, they got they got to base, basically play four on five out on the perimeter. That shot was way off and out of bounds on the attempt to keep it in. They got it to J.D. Davidson. Quinterly and Shackleford have 37 of the team's 57. Wendell Green's got 17 on the other side. Smith has 13. And Rojas also back into the game for Alabama. A step up screen by Kessler. Johnson high to the rack and he banged it in off the backboard challenge Davidson. Well, that's just a tough baseline drive And Auburn gonna stick with this 2-3 zone Finally penetrates Kessler with a big block and now Johnson and Davidson to the basket and a foul on Davidson or a Kessler turning that defense into offense well, a 2-3 zone keeps him in the middle if you drive into him. Kansas, Duke, Carolina, Saturday 6 Eastern, and of course the Pro Bowl Sunday 3 Eastern, ABC. Game day going to be where with the Duke-Carolina game? We'll be in Chapel Hill Good. for the Duke-North Carolina rivalry. Good to be back with the crew on the road last week, right? Oh, it was fantastic. What an atmosphere at Kansas. Uh, the Jayhawks didn't have their best game thanks to Kentucky. Kentucky was fantastic in that game. Johnson missed the first 
It felt like Alabama did a lot of work to cut the lead to two, and it just didn't feel like Auburn did a lot of hard work to get it back to 10, now 11. Well, they put Wendell Green Jr. back in the game. And the entire game changes when he's on the floor. Still sticking with that 2-3 zone. J.D. Davidson has really been a non-factor as far as the stats go. And I will stay with Alabama. Davidson has taken two shots, missed them both. He's got three assists, two personal fouls, and no rebounds. And he was just such a big part of their win over Baylor. Coming out of that last time out, we had a shot of Suni Lee, the yeah. great Olympic gymnast. Let to give her a uniform. Bruce will throw a lob to her. <laughs> 2020 all-around champion, Suni Lee, here in Auburn. Good fake. Into the paint, finger roll. On the game, Wendell Green. He is an excellent layup maker at his size. Gurley, watch out. That's blocked from behind, but they're going to call Kessler with the body. And the Auburn bench is in shock. Well, that's a heck of a block up top. Well, look at this. Look at this. Look away and then using the right hand off the glass. That's just beautiful. And take a look at this one. I'm not sure how often that's going to be called a foul, but he did catch a little bit of his shoulder. The one thing you like about that is you know, you're protecting a shooter. Not particularly popular in that uh, that area of the stands. Didn't go over well there. Or with that guy. Early second free throw, missed the first. Bruce Pro imploring his team to box out. We have Kester and Williams down there, and Alabama's given up about eight inches to both of those guys, no matter who they put in. As Betty Ocko re enters, three blocks in this half by Charles Betty Ocko. Well, 11 minutes to go in regulation. That's still a ton of time, and 12 points in this game is not an insurmountable lead. He'd rather have it than not, but there's still plenty of time for Alabama. Good, Good pass. pass. Yes, it was. Betty Ocko went straight up. And he and Kester battled. And they got 20 fresh ones. Cambridge. Look out. That, that hit everything but the rim. That hit the shot clock, hit the top of the backboard. And Cambridge, who made one three in the first half, missed that one. He's been a factor offensive rebounding lately. And the shot hasn't been falling, staying active that way. They had nine offensive rebounds Cambridge did against Missouri. That's just a tough pass to make with Kessler in the middle. You can block him up top, deflect him down low. Wendell Green left wide open. That's too strong. Walker Kessler has it. How about the big fella going down amongst the Shackleford's and Quinterly's to keep control of it? KD Johnson. And that's going to go out of bounds off Cambridge. Now, Auburn's been settling a little bit. Mm -hmm. you know, they got downhill in the first half so easily. Alabama certainly tightened the defense up in the second half. But that doesn't mean you can't still try to punch the paint a little bit more. Sticking with the 2 3 zone. Eddie Ako down low, so it's four on four on the perimeter. And that Keon Ellis a brick. And Betty Ako's. Foolishly picks up a foul and Devin Cambridge has that basketball. So we're under 10. It's 70 to 58. And a reminder, SVP is coming up next. Highlights reaction from this busy Tuesday in college hoops. And the big story in the NFL is the Dolphins former head coach Brian Flores suing the NFL and three teams, alleging racism in hiring practices and the end of an error. It is official now. Tom Brady is done. Sports Center SVP right here on ESPN and the ESPN app. Watch all the programs today, the talk shows, and NFL Live did a really good job covering the Flores story, which is a very, very big story with his suit against the NFL and the three teams. SVP will have much more on that and the rest of the day in sports coming up when we're done. You see the report where 
Tom Brady may sign a one-day contract with the Patriots so he can retire a Patriot? I did not. I didn't. I don't get that because he didn't retire a Patriot. He retired a Buck. Right. He played for the Patriots for a long time. For a long time. I don't get that. That, that. that happens a lot in baseball, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, he's will be known, right? As, you will know him as a Patriot, won't you? Well, it's like getting divorced and then so you can die single. Yeah, I think I think that's right. <laughs> Green, look out! Wendell Green, 21 points. Five rebounds and six assists. He has been spectacular. Quinterly blocked. That's Kessler again. And it's starting to get away from Alabama here on the road. Kessler just takes him right out of the air. You don't see many shot blockers being able to, you know, make plays in the air like that so far away from the basket. Kessler. We still have eight on the shot clock. Flanagan. Early foul, Kessler. They just put his elbow right into his chest. Cambridge on the floor, and it's a tie-up. And they're going to get a foul. We've got Keon Ellis. It is. Now watch this block by Kessler. This is a next-level block. I mean, a little floater high, and he is able to just take it right out of the air and then corral it. You know, you don't see many guys blocking high floaters. Walker Kessler, how about this stat line? He has 11 rebounds. He's got six blocks. He has four steals. And he's got nine points. You know, oftentimes, Ravi, the term playmaker is used for a guard or a wing. But those are plays yeah. that are being made. You know, the, the, the steals, the deflections, the blocks. You know, the rebounds, those are big plays, too. And Walker Kessler has been a playmaker in that regard. You know, and he makes multiple effort plays going after the block shot and going after the rebound. We'll see what happens now. Jasper's back in the game. It puts Green on the bench. They set up a three, and Gurley knocks that one down. That was all created by Shackelford. You know, getting that paint touch, and naturally the defense is going to react, especially when it's Shackelford because he's such a great scorer. But he dragged the defense, and Gurley was wide open. Good pass. Yep, Kessler down low, and a flush. It's like a play on in soccer because he could have called a foul on Gurley for getting his wrist, but they let it go, and he flushed it. He clears so much space when he rolls off those pick and roll situations. Well, they're going to get him with the body, and again, the Auburn bench is frustrated. You that know, was an arm, they got him with an arm bar. You know, that's an automatic call. It's just the referees aren't calling it this year. In this game, they have, but generally, that that's that's let go, and it's it's a foul. Auburn's gone on runs of 9-0, 11-0, and 13-1, and I would venture a guess to say that Green's been on the floor for all three of those. I think that's exactly right. Like, he's the speed. Now, now watch watch Kessler here. When he puts his arm bar on him, that's a foul. and But it, it has gone uncalled all year long. I mean, it's an epidemic right now in officiating. They're just letting that go. That, that time, they called it correctly. Kessler now has 11 points and 11 rebounds. The six blocks. Here comes Cardwell set the screen. Roll replace. And again, high Arthur, no good. Cardwell banging, and how about that? Ripped it away from two Princeton Tide players. It's a great offensive rebound to keep it alive. Pretty play by Flanagan. That's a big play by Cardwell. It led to the easy basket because he did something really hard. Lee goes to 18 and on the floor, Don Bailey whistles it against Devin Cambridge. 79-61.
Auburn, the number one team in the land. Look at the state post. He is really smooth. Think Jason Tatum with his ability to get to that back shoulder fade. They're getting downhill to the rim and finishing. So when you look at the 3 and D floor as a guy who can really shoot and defend, and then the upside is a shot creator, he's very much in the mix for the number one pick. Really nice young man, too. Who else on the floor tonight has impressed you? Walker Kessler has made himself a lot of money tonight. I don't know how many blocks he has, eight, nine, ten, something close to it, but he's changed so many shots at the rim. He's been really active as a rebounder. I thought he's made some nice reads as well. So he's looked like a potential first-round pick so far. Every NBA team is looking for guys who can block shots and bring that type of energy and have skill offensively. I think he's going to be able to shoot the ball down the road. So reminds you a little bit of Miles Turner. Jay Bill is not the only person making a lot of money tonight, Carl. <laughs> Well, he's actually getting it though. Walkers is down the road. Kessler's got six blocks. He's got a triple double already this year. Uh, obviously, with the four more blocks, he'd have another one. Well, Mike Schmitz is right. I mean, and he's always right. He's the best draft analyst in the business. And, and he and Jonathan Gavoni do just such a great job. Gavoni's got scouting reports on every eighth grader in Latvia right now. It's amazing. <laughs> but his point on Kessler, like right now, Walker Kessler's got 11 points, 11 rebounds, six blocks, and four steals. Other than that, Carl Ravitch, he's done nothing. Nothing. I think the other takeaway from the game with seven minutes to go, you bring Dylan Cardwell in, impacts the game. You bring Green in, impacts the game. Their depth is really shown, and when you think about the tournament, the SEC tournament, the NCAA tournament, you can get into foul trouble. You can afford yourself all these different opportunities. This is this is a tough, tough out. And they play so hard, so well prepared. Back to that 2-3 zone, Cardwell in the middle. And in the game looked like this against Alabama, Alabama doesn't have the size to compete with them. Winner Lee buries a three. He's been great tonight. So difficult. Even Jasper, who's a great on-ball defender, had to give him space because he can just shoot by you. Give him that space, then he just steps back and knocks down a three. That should qualify. He's been great in the second half. He didn't do much in the first half, but he's now got 18 points on seven of 18 shooting. I think he was one of seven in the first half. But Cardwell had. Jabari Smith wide open off that little flex cut got the screen from KD Johnson the Carwell just didn't see him until it was too late KD he will fire one way short in the hands of Rojas that wasn't a very good shot Trafford hop step that's not a foul oh okay they got it and that's a foul On Cardwell. Shackelford is so good at snaking through openings. He was just able to plant his feet and change direction. It's tough to stay in front of these Alabama guards. Five reason college hoop coming for you on Saturday. Baylor, Kansas, 4 Eastern. And then the biggest one of all, of course, Duke and Carolina for Dean Smith Center, 8 Eastern. Number five, Kentucky takes on Alabama. A tremendous day of hoops. I should have asked Mike Schmitz this when we had it. What's Shackleford's next step once you leave college? Well, I, I think he's got to be able to handle the ball as, as a lead guard. But because he can shoot it so well and stretch the floor and he's good off the dribble and driving it, he, he can play in the NBA. There's no question about it, especially in the spread floor game. But how about, you know, we saw that Duke, Duke North Carolina promo tonight against Louisville. Armando Baycott had 22 rebounds. There's not been a better, better player as far as numbers and consistent production. Than Baycott, there's number seven. Yep. Look at Rojas. Oh, boy, he's going to get fouled. He went and undercut. Now in Flanagan. Uh, Walker Kessler just sprints the floor and comes from behind, knocks that with his left hand, just covers up the rim, never made any contact with Quinterly. Yet another big time block. To Mike Schmitz's point, it's not just the blocks that are impressive, and they've been impressive. There are seven of them. But he's changed so many shots with his presence around the rim. 
It was against LSU earlier this year when he had 16, 11 blocks, and 10 rebounds. He's got 11, 11 rebounds and seven blocks tonight. And he's stretching that range out. He can knock a three down. Yeah. This 2 3 zone has been effective. And they finally got one behind and over Chester. Rojas laid it up and in. 16 point game, five and a half to go. One of the things about the zone for Auburn, they don't have to guard as many ball screens. 14 point game. Rojas tried to kick it. Look at Kessler with the left and a foul. Boy, he's doing everything tonight. And showing his versatility off. And that's not an easy catch, Ravi. That, that's off a short roll. And you got a defender in front of you, and he caught it without the walk. And just another thread of the needle. That was right through Rojas's legs. And he's able to finish that with his left hand. Don Daly, Don Daly just issued both teams technicals. Flanagan and I think Shockford started with Quinterly and Green. Active. And you could argue they've got you know, six or seven starters. And Wendell Green Jr. could absolutely start. But he changes the game when he comes in off the bench. Yeah. And he goes in against a, after Jasper wears out the opposing point guard with his ball pressure. Then he's going against a, a little bit of a worn out guard. Trying to get downhill, and they do. They're going to call that on KD. Quinterly will go to the free throw line. The other thing that Alabama, that Auburn's going to do, this, they're going to set a school record for block shots. Obviously, Kessler's a major contributor to that. But they came in with 169. They were 21 shy of a school record. It was set just a couple of years ago. And they have nine blocks tonight. Well, Cardwell's a, uh, Dylan Cardwell's a good shot blocker. Yes, he is. Well, he's blocked coming into this game. He blocked what, 32 or 33 shots and he got you know, Jabari Smith blocked shots, but nobody does it at the rate that Walker Kessler does This will be Quinterly's 20th point if he can knock the free throw down so back-to-back 20-point -back games for Javon Quinterly Quinterly's from New Jersey started he committed to Arizona, then with all that FBI stuff, wound up at Villanova, then transferred to Alabama. It's really blossomed. Flanagan step back three short. Kessler, yes. And was knocked out of his hands by Gary. He just went right over the top of Rojas, made no contact with him. It was two-handed rebound. Now Shackleford and ooh. That's tipped in by Gary. He drew Kessler away from the rim, which opened it up for Gary. 13-point lead. It seems like a comfortable lead. I don't think you can feel comfortable against Alabama with the way they can score. Smith sizing up, sizing up Gary to the hole. He went to dunk that. It was fouled hard. Boy, it was another... Level that Jabari Smith just showed. Yeah, that was their flex action. I think they call it smoke five cutters. And you had Jabari Smith setting the screen along the baseline for KD Johnson. Johnson was open. They just missed him. But then you've got either Jabari Smith ducking in or popping out to the perimeter. He popped out. And then he got one on one on the wing. Fourteen for Jamari Smith. It got real quiet, and that ball barely hit the net. Because his form is impeccable. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. Davison's wide open and that's off continuing a miserable night for him. It's loose on the floor and here comes Flanagan. He's got three with him. KD Johnson ball fake three buries it. And that may have buried Alabama up 18 with less than four to go. Love you Dickie V. Love you buddy. Miss you. We'll send you the picture. Well you just got you and your hand in it. My hands You're a small. terrible selfie taker. I'm You're fired. Worst. Here, one more. Here you go. 
But how about the job that Auburn has done in keeping Alabama out of transition? That was a big part of Auburn's game plan. And they have not let Alabama get many transition opportunities. We'll take a timeout. 3.37 to go. Auburn in the paint. 46 points in the paint. 27 fast break points. They have more than doubled up Alabama in both of those categories. And look at that stat line. That's and then the four steals at the bottom. You don't see many guys getting multiple blocks like that and multiple steals. Seven blocks, four steals is a spectacular defensive performance by the big guy from Georgia. Only one guy has put up numbers like that this year. It's the same guy. No one else in Division One has got those numbers with the steals and the blocks that Kessler does. Kessler grew up in Georgia, and he's from Georgia. He ended up in North Carolina, but really talked about this year, and why not? Oh, a little strong. Wanting to come back home. He got back home. He's way more comfortable. So he gets a chance to be at home, see his family more often, and you can just see the way he's playing with the comfort level. But that's a 40, and there's another block. Eight. He's blocking jump shots. He wants an alley-oop, and there it is. But that time, Rojas read it, too. Win or eight? Nope. Where Alabama head coach Nate Oates had talked about his team wanting to get back to having fun. Playing Auburn's no fun. Nope. I mean, there, there's no way you're going to play against this team and think that it was fun. This is a good team that plays hard. One through ten. They had a lot of fun against Baylor, and that game was at home. And then, of course, that Kentucky game coming up with Jabari Smith does what Jabari Smith's going to do for a long time. Face up and bury a jumper. Well, when you need a bucket, you can just isolate Smith, <laughs> and he can get it for you. That Kentucky game for Alabama is going to be at home for Alabama. You get to go from Walker Kessler to Oscar Shibwe. Now look how tough it's going to be for Alabama to get the ball inbounds with Kessler guarding Davison. Shackleford, that's uh, blocked by Kessler, but there was a foul on Jabari Smith first. That's why you don't want to foul, because he's there to, Kessler's there to erase it, so don't foul. Jaden Shackelford shooting for his 25th point of the night. Really classy move by Auburn during pregame. The gentleman on that poster board is Luke Ratliff, affectionately known throughout the Southeastern Conference as Fluff. Biggest, biggest Alabama fan in the world. Uh, went to 40 plus straight road games with the Tide. Nate Oates really embraced him. He completely changed the Alabama basketball student section and unfortunately in early April of 2001 two weeks after his beloved Tide lost to UCLA in the NCAA tournament Fluff passed away I'm gonna tell you guys something he was a wonderful person he had a beautiful spirit and anytime you were around him you felt like he was a light we miss you bud yeah Marty classy move by Auburn to Honor him before the game. One thing between these two schools, as much as it is a rivalry, there is a respect, and it does translate onto the basketball floor. And it's going to be that way for a long time. I mean, Jay, you've been around this game for a long time. The SEC is as deep as it's ever been, and a lot of that has to do with with the coaches and then subsequently the players they bring in is two of the best Jabari Smith and Kessler are taken out of the game yeah, spectacular performance Jabari Smith was outstanding Kessler was spectacular but your point about well, one the SEC I think is the best conference in the country this year uh, tremendous depth where well, they have eight teams in the net top, top 51 50, yeah. yep Mississippi State 51 otherwise yeah. be eight in the top 50 but that's pretty impressive and you know the state of Alabama I mean with Nate Oates at Alabama and Bruce Turrell here at Auburn and Andy Kennedy at UAB it reminds you a little bit of when Wimp Sanderson was at Alabama you had Sonny Smith who 
I was able to chat with for a while before the game. He does Auburn radio. And Gene Barto was at UAB. That was the last time he had this kind of strength on the hardwood here in this state. Wendell Green frees himself up and then launches. The crowd's chanting NIT. I don't know what they're watching. Uh, yeah, Alabama, they're watching. Alabama's, Alabama's won you know, five games against quad one teams. They're going to the NCAA tournament. They're dangerous once they get there. You know, last year, Alabama, I thought, was the Final Four team. Exactly. You know, they lost to UCLA, but you know, they missed a 1,000 free throws in that game. And now the bench will clear. You mentioned it, five and one against. The problem is they've been like number 47 against everybody else. They have some furious losses. This is not one of those. Yeah, they, they've seemed to play up to their competition. And this game, their competition was just too good. This was a two-point game in this half. Preston Cook with a nice drive and a left-hand finish. He's been a, a good leader for this team. Helps run the scout team. Auburn will improve to 21 and 1. Haven't lost at home. Their only loss in the season was to Connecticut at Atlantis early in the season. And that was a double overtime loss. Bob enjoying what they're seeing from the bench players from Auburn. <laughs> Heck of a drive and finish. Took the contact, never took his eyes off the rim. Out of Mountain Brook High School. Tough area, Mountain Brook. I don't know if you've been Carter Sobera with a three point play. They were going home happy, now they're going home delirious. I mean, he can hang a hundred on Alabama. That's pretty impressive. This has been a very impressive performance by the Auburn Tigers. Worthy of the number one ranking. Jackson wants to take one more before we wrap this one up, and that's off the mark. And that will do it. Auburn puts a hundred up, and they beat Alabama 100 to 81 to sweep the season. And now they're right over in front of us, celebrating with the jungle. What a performance by Walker.